Yo, what is going on guys? Cryptic TMG back with a brand new video. Today we're going to be talking setups and rake. Low rake against high rake and how you can make changes to effectively use both and why you might use one over the other. So let's get stuck into the video. So I chose the Porsche for this video because the Porsche has a very, very sensitive error balance and small changes can have a big effect on the car like the Porsche. But I'm going to show you basically what you would do if you wanted to run lower rake, the kind of changes you would make to the car off the back against what you would need to make if you was running a higher rate to make the car still stable but give you that extra turning so we're going to go ahead with the aggressive setup we're going to make basic changes um to the aggressive i'll quickly try and remember the tire pressures because i've been doing coda this week um i believe it's something like this something similar to this anyway um i don't think you have to go too high on the the toes on the front max the caster out um Go a little bit minus on the rear toe. You don't have to actually take it too far because um, the car actually rotates quite nicely. And you, you want to get that rear traction with the Porsche because that's one of the main strengths. I always think you should focus on a lot of the strengths of what the car has. So we go to the electronics. We'll leave the TC on three. We'll put the ABS to two. Get rid of TC two. We know that's just slower at the moment. Um, put your brake, front brake ducts. Um, sorry, front brake discs. You want them on one course and we're going to focus mainly on the mechanical grip and the aero dampers we'll just do the quick damper trick i guess um things might have changed with the dampers but we're, i'm not really focusing on that today just want to focus on um what we're going to do with the aero and the mechanical grip so we're going to use max wing on both setups now let's say you wanted to run a configuration that was low rake because you wanted that stability through the first sector so first of all let's put the front ride height down to minimum and we'll leave the rear we'll even go down on the rear let's say we want to run 61 like really low rake how are we now going to get this car to turn in through the fast corners how are we now going to get that rotation into the car without you know massively going up on the rear ride height so the main way to be able to affect um the way how the car goes through fast corners for me personally, to get that rotation is to go up on the rear wheel rate. Now, this might affect you on acceleration. Your, your back end is going to be a little bit more skittish. But basically, the higher you go with the rear wheel rate, the more rotation you're going to get. And it's very easy to overstep the mark and have over rotation with this. So it's a balancing act between the front and the rear. The, the, the more you put the front wheel rate up, then the more the car is going to understeer into corners so basically you want to re start reducing that um and have the have the rear higher than the front and that's going to start giving you rotation into the corners also we'll get rid of the uh, bump stop rate as well we'll put it all the way down um we'll put this up to 15 this is without even even driving this guy so um between the between the the rear wheel rate and the rear bump stop rate the higher you go up with this this is going to give you that rear end oversteer so you've got to be careful because it is quite easy to overdo it now the other way you're going to get rotation especially into the slow corners the porsche tends to use very rearwards brake bias anyway but because the rake is so low um we're going to need a little bit more rotation so we can put the the brake bias towards the rear even more and yeah this is basically what i'd be doing to get the car to rotate we'll go a bit stiffer on the front anti-roll bar softer on the rear we want the car to really be able to turn in the slow speed corners i personally like 15 on the steering ratio it depends what you like um but now let's test it and see how it goes through the first sector whether or not there's too much understeer if there is too much understeer we might as well go up with the rear bump stop rate or maybe a click more of rear wheel rate but we're not going to adjust the ride height at the back so um let's see how that goes Oh, oh, oh. 
So you could see through that first sector, there still was a little bit of understeer through there. And also, when getting on power, the rear end was, you know, it was a little bit snappy. And that's because the rear wheel rate is quite high. So I'm going to tell you how you can still alter that without, again, having to touch the rear right height. So let's go back into the setup. So trying that out for the first time, there was a little bit still of understeer, I would say. But the problem we were having is whenever the car was in the lower gears, you can see like right at the top of the hill um, after the S's section, the back end was still a little bit snappy. And that's because the, the rear wheel rate is still quite high. But I'm going to show you how you can still manage to get the turn in um, without, you know, making the rear end even more unstable when you're trying to get onto the power. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the wheel rate by one click because it still was... A little tricky to get on the power but then we're going to go up on the bump stop rate to about 1200 i would say and um, we're going to go down on the front wheel rate it should help the front of the car turn into the corners even better um and right right now we don't actually need the preload actually left the preload on but when you're running rake when you're running really low rake you pretty much don't want to have on any preload because the preload is basically when you're off throttle you know how how oversteer the car is and because you know off throttle the car should be pretty good because we have such low rake you want some minimum okay so we've gone down on the rear wheel rate just to recap and we've gone up on the rear bump stop rate so we're going to try that instead and see how we get on through the s's See now that time it was way easier to get on the power um, at the top of the hill. Literally you could just plant the foot down. You saw how we jumped over the curb right at the top of the hill. Back end didn't step out. Perfectly fine. Very easy to handle. And at the same time still extremely stable through you know the fast corners. The changes of direction. Typically with a car like the Porsche. Much harder to get right if you've got too much rake or you've got the car right on the edge. And to be honest with you that's what makes the best drivers in the Porsche on a complete different level to everybody else because it is one of those cars that has to be driven to drive it really fast has to be driven on a, a knife edge of, of balance of aero balance and the guys who are the best at it those are the guys who can extract the maximum amount of um, time from the car which is extremely difficult let me tell you man the Porsche's balance switches very quickly if you if you mess with the wrong thing in the setup so um, yeah, just beware when you're driving a Porsche, but now I'm going to show you how to use high rake in the Porsche and the things you might want to change to get through, you know, the SS section or sections like that um, without completely and utterly just binning it. But this is probably a little bit more tricky to do, but may be able to find more lap time overall with the higher rake. So let's go back into the setup. We're going to leave all this. Um, we're going to come across to mechanical grip. Now, for me, how I, you know, tend to balance out the car when running high rake is to put the rear wheel rate all the way down, put the bump stop rate all the way down at the rear. And I normally go stiffer on the front. This is just the, the basics, guys, okay? You want to go a little stiffer on the front. I normally put maybe a click or two of front ride height. And now let's say we want to run 77, which is way higher than what we had before. Probably it's about 15 clicks higher, I think, than what we had before. All right, so um, we're going to try and run this. Also, we'll put the preload up to, say, 220. Um, we won't mess with the front bump stop rate, but it is an option as well. We'll probably go a little bit further forward on the brake bias, let's say. 
<clears throat> and I don't I don't know whether I should try 54 or 55 on the front. Let's try 55 just to be a little safer. And let's see how the car reacts through the S's with a ton more rake than what we had before. So as you can see, the car is totally unstable through the SS section. I did try twice, two fails. So let's see what we can do without touching the rake again. How we can affect the way how the front of the car feels. We're going to go up even more on the preload. We're going to put it to 280. And we're going to go up as well on the front bun stop rate. And we're going to go again. I don't feel, I feel like the brakes are okay. But definitely as the car changes direction, it's extremely sensitive. I can feel it through the wheel. If you turn slightly too much, then you're literally just straight away into a spin. So we're going to try again. Hopefully we don't have to touch the right height. But um, everything else is exactly the same as it was before. You see I've made no other changes whatsoever to any of the other aspects of the car. Just literally between the aero and the mechanical grip where we're trying to find the balance. So... Let's get back out there and hopefully we can make it through sector one because you know sections like this pretty much let you know the balance of the car okay so um let's go again Now, going through sector one, you can see there was definitely still way too much sliding. So, the rake probably maybe is a click too high. But again, I just want to show you guys how you can affect how the car feels without having to touch the rake. So, we're going to go up some more on the front bump stop rate. And maybe a click more of the wheel rate at the front. Now, these are not idle setups, but... It's just a basic explanation of how, you know, you can change the characteristics of the car without having to always rely on touching the rake and stuff like that. Um, again, we're going to try that again because the car still felt really, really skittish. We're going to go down on the rear anti-roll bar. That should help with the acceleration at the top of the hill because I still didn't like the way how the car came and went on power. Even though you could actually see the understeer through the fast corners like sometimes 
you might need a little bit of understeer on a one-off qualifying lap you might want the car a little bit oversteer but obviously for a race situation you're not going to want the car to be sliding through corners so it's all about finding that correct balance neither way is right or wrong it's just about finding the correct balance of comfortability and speed for your own driving style so we're going to try that one more time with the changes that we made and the car should theoretically be a little bit more stable through that first sector So the car actually did have nice rotation. You might have actually noticed as well, when, once we went through the S's section, the car at the top of the hill in a slow corner before the tight left-hander actually turned a lot better on the front end in a slow corners, which obviously is one of the positives. But I can tell you it was a lot more tricky to get the car through the S's section. It was definitely a lot more on edge, but you could carry the speed once you initially got over you know going through that first um sort of left right left sequence but through this corner right here the rotation was definitely better so again it's one of those subjective things i don't know depending on your driving style how you may like you know the cars to handle or whatever the way is for you to get the best out of the car for me personally you probably want to find a sort of in between you want enough rate to where you know you can get that turning through the fast corners but also you sort of want to be able to get on the power and on the throttle early as well so just a, a quick video for you guys to figure out how you might be trying to balance your setups depending on what car you use as well a lot of the front engine cars have got more innate understeer so you know you have to take that into account a lot of cars like the aston and stuff like that they can run much higher levels of rake without having the you know the the cons of some of the other cars so you have to take that into consideration but this is just a brief explanation on how you can switch balance between the car without having to always rely on having a high rake or a low rake or anything like that but anyway guys cryptic tmg like and subscribe hit the notification bell to catch my videos first and peace